guess we didn't serve any alcohol tonight. Good evening. Good evening. Energy is a little better. Good to see everybody. Let me uh, first of all thank the organizers of this wonderful event, the uh, Georgia chapter of the Southern Region of DNC Global. Did I get that right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for, for organizing this. And it's good to, uh, to be back in Atlanta. So, um, I will just cover two topics tonight. This will not be you know, a long speech. But there's some nervousness about whether we can win. So let me just reassure you that we can and how. Because I think, you know, uh, and then I will briefly describe the Liberia we're trying to aspire to develop. So um, there is a lot of good work happening on the ground to make the case to the Liberian people. We have teams in Nimba. We just sent teams into Grand Barcelona into Bong, we're organizing teams to go into um, Agiri, into the Western Cluster. So there's mobilization efforts happening on the ground as we speak. Uh, so you may not be all visible, but there's work, there's work happening. The other thing I will say to you too is that we have a lot of supporters that are not as vocal, as visible, because and every government in the past have done this. When you're on the wrong side, they come after you, they punish you. But this government is the most vicious yeah. and the most determined in our efforts. So people have to protect their jobs or their contracts or their wives or their families or brothers. So they're not as public as you know we'd like them to be in their support, but that support exists. The other thing I'll keep reminding Liberians that um, the, the CDC has been good at they have propaganda around, well, the opposition is split, and therefore, CDC will win in the first round. Uh, don't fall for that propaganda. Let me tell you why it doesn't make sense. If you look at 2005, 2011, 2017 elections, and if we focus on 2017 when President Weah was, was at his most popular, when his coalition was at its strongest, when he did not have a record to defend, he only got 38% in the first round. Fact, right? And he got less in 2011 with running for VP and even less in 2005 in the first round. So with the record he has to defend, which as you know is a failed record, it's just a fact and not because I'm I want to replace him, but he's failed. And the fact that librarians are actually resolved that he will not go back. Um, the opposition is actually less <coughs> is actually less fractured. In 2017, you had Alexander Cummings, Charles Bronsky, Joe Bodka, Prince Johnson, George Bia, all running. More fractured. This election, you got three main candidates. Alexander Cummings, Joseph Walker, and George Weah. So they have hypothesis of a postulation that Joe Weah win the president is because they want to cheat and want to justify the cheating. The cheating is a whole different conversation. We can talk about that and how we hope to minimize that happening. But that's not going to happen. He's not going to win the first round. Um, so be assured that work is happening we will increase the level of activity, we increase the visibility of the activity, which is what I think people want to see and feel, and we will do the work required to win this election. Many conversations are happening behind the scenes, everybody talking to everybody, and we'll see where it all leads. So don't think that we aren't in the conversations, or we're not having a conversation, or we're not talking, and everybody's looking for an angle. Right, uh, and we're looking for an angle too. Uh, so there's no naivete about how the politics work and what needs to be done to ensure that President Weir is a one-term president that is replaced in January next year. And, and that was 
But all of this, and this is why we're here tonight, all of this requires money. You know, in this country, one of the main measures of whether people will be successful is how much money they will raise the last quarter. You don't always say, this can be raised X number of dollars, has so much in the bank, is a good barometer of the chances of winning, right? And so, rate fundraising, and you can contribute in cash or in kind, right? We need t-shirts, we need flyers, or all of those things. And we organize for people to donate whatever you want to do it. But money is required to win democratic elections anywhere in the world. And so let me again thank you for your presence here tonight and for your contributions towards that end. Because we do need the resources, we need the money. We're not trying to compete with the government because we can. They they, are, they will empty the treasury. And that's what they're doing. So we're not trying to match them. That's not practical, that's not realistic. But 30, 40, 50% on the dollar versus them will be enough because we'll spend it smarter than they will. Um, we have a, a roadmap. We're not just running this thing out of skeleton. We're doing polling, so we know where we are. We know which districts that we will spend more time and resources. We know which districts we will be wasting our time because we'll vote for Joe or for the president. So we're not just doing this. We don't operate that way. There's facts, there's data, there's a strategy, and we're implementing that strategy, and you will see it more visibly in the weeks and months to come as we ramp up towards October. But we are in a sprint. This has been a marathon. We're in the last mile and a half now, and so we're sprinting to the finish, and we can continue to build momentum. So leave tonight assured that the, the work is happening. We still kind of have a lot of work to do. We still need your help. Whether you're calling to encourage people to support us, whether you're sending monies in this effort, your contributions tonight and in the future between now and October, we need your help, but there's a strategy, there's a plan, it's being implemented, and we're confident that the outcome in, uh, in October of this year. So, let me just switch briefly and just describe so that in Liberian terms, the country we all should be aspiring towards developing. And some of you may have heard this, and you hear a lot more, but it, it simplifies what we're trying to do because you know you can talk about infrastructure, and education, and all the things we know we need, right? But I describe this bowl of rice we all eat from because we all eat rice, right? There are two different rice dishes tonight <laughs> that were served, so you know we are consumers of rice. Um, and this bowl of rice is the is a metaphor for the, for opportunities. But in this bowl of rice, you've got good jobs, you've got good infrastructure, meaning roads, electricity, running water, technology. You've got good schools, good educational systems. You've got good health care. You've got investment in agriculture. You've got foreign direct investment happening. And all of these things are in this bowl of rice. And our job, aspiration, is to make that bowl of rice bigger. More job opportunities more and better education systems, more and better affordable health care, more and better infrastructure across the country, making Liberia an agro-based economy. All of this in this border right, and we want to make this border right bigger. And we want to guarantee every Liberian the right to coat their hand in that border right. Every Liberian. Because when you think about this, you do not choose what tribe you're born into or what tribe you are. You don't choose whether you're Kula, Kiyo, Kran, Mano, Kongo, Basa, Kribo, not your choice. You don't choose your gender, whether you're man or you're woman. You don't choose the religion you're born into, Christian or Muslim. You don't choose whether you're young or old, you your age. And so none of these things should give you an advantage a disadvantage over anybody else because it's not your choice. So we want a Liberia where every Liberian is guaranteed the same opportunity. The 
only thing that will limit your ability to eat in that bowl of rice, one, you gotta follow the rules. You have to obey the law. If you steal, you rape, you kill, you break the law, but now you break the law. But that's a choice you make. Yeah, you don't choose your tribe, your religion, your gender, your age, your ability or disability, but you can choose to follow the rules or not. And you don't obey the law, but now you go ahead and go around. So we'll punish you. The other thing that will limit how much that I raise you eat if you're lazy. <laughs> if you're lazy, you're not eating much of the rest. If you're industrial, you're sure you're eating more of the rest. But that's also up to you. That's a choice. That's what I really want. Today, if you're not a sedition, you can't go ahead and go rice. In the past, the Congo boys would kill the rice on themselves. That's not what I really want. All of this big shot business, you know who I am? We can't get rid of all of that. You supporting me because you want a chance to come play big shot, <laughs> to come and chop that room money, and I die. <laughs> if you want us to come and work together to change Liberia, come, let's work together. And I say, we, not I. This country will not change because we're talking. And you know, we're good at talking, right? <laughs> This country will not change because we wish it to change. It will not change because we pray to change. We got to pray too. Yeah. But it will change because we do the work and make the sacrifice. Yeah. If we as a people are not prepared to do the work, like we will not change. We will be talking, talking. Six years from now, somebody else will be having this conversation with you. The country will not move unless we're prepared to do the work and make the sacrifice. That's the only way that we will change. And I'm prepared to do the work. We will set the example. <laughs> you cannot ask people to work hard if you're not prepared to work hard as a leader. Yeah. You cannot tell people to go to work at either time you go to work at seven o'clock. Everybody can knock yeah. You cannot tell people not to see if you see them as a leader. Everybody will but who's to bear? Yeah. <laughs> the first thing they will see you. We will set the example. <laughs> we will hold people accountable. When you break the law or punish, we will not get let you resign. There will be consequences. If we're not prepared for this, I will not change. We come to this country, or we go to Europe, or we go to South Africa, or wherever, and we don't follow the rules. We don't go to work on time. We don't drink and drive. We don't sleep with honor and women. But we go to Labrador, we want to call us. The Labrador we want, that will not be accepted, we will not allow it. Yeah. Everybody will have to stand in line. If you want to get your passport, you want to get your driver's license, no pain, you will cut to the front of your line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't do that yet. We're not going to Liberia, and when Liberia is Liberia, we're not going to Liberia, and everyone follows the rules. If we're not prepared for this, my people, the country will not change. Hard work, discipline, follow the rules. There's no magic to this stuff. It's not magic. There's no simple bullet anybody will wave. But Liberia can change faster than we think. We got it. Ingenuity, we got the intellect, we got the work ethic. You see the young people in the street, the hot sun, the rain selling, then people say, I'm very poor, lazy. BS. It's about directing that energy, it's about guiding it. So we have what it takes to change the country. Today I met with, we got people working on different policies, agriculture, infrastructure, you know, all the different areas of education and health. It's amazing the level of thinking, right? And creativity and thoughtfulness. And it's all at yours, right? And by the way, we will invite partners to work with us. Because we will need the help, we need the resources. But we will be clear about what we want them to help us do. So rather than telling us what they want to do, not, I ended up with their money, so they will have some say. 
right? Let's be practical. But we will be clear what we want to accomplish in every sector, what choices we'll make, what priorities we'll set, and then what action will help us achieve our objectives. But we gotta lead that. We gotta own it. We gotta own the country. We gotta own the problems. We gotta own the solutions. We gotta tell our own stories. But everybody in this room, everybody on the ground, gotta be better. We show up to be if we want this country to change. And then it will change faster than we can get. Today, in, in, in the past it's been like, and today I often describe that we protected by this type of push. But not in the pepper push. <laughs> so let's grow the pepper. Then we can regulate it, we can protect it. And so we encourage risk taking, we encourage experimentation. Because there's nothing there today anyway. So what are, why are we kidding ourselves? Let people try, let it develop, let them go to the temple, then we'll come and regulate. But this is the kind of thinking we need if we want to change our library. And we have to be determined to do it this October. Liberia cannot go another six years of the we are led government. We cannot let that happen. We deserve a better country. We, our country don't reflect who we are. And it, 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 it needs to start doing that. And it's not enough for Liberians to say, oh, I'm not getting involved in politics. You know, that pisses me off. Because politics affects everything. And particularly in our country, in African countries in general, it touches everything. And whether you support me or you support Joe Boca, don't support Joe, we are please. Or somebody else, get involved. Get involved. Help. The country will not change if you just are spectators, if you just want to talk. If you don't want to criticize, suggestions are always welcome, but God help us implement a suggestion. Very important. Again, if we want library to change, we got to be prepared to get involved and do the work. If we do that, our country will change. So let me thank you again for this wonderful evening. I will not start giving names because I'll get in trouble. We will leave people out, people will be offended. So to all the organizers of this event, thank you uh, for the performers, uh, for everybody here, all, all the contributors, uh, your presence here is a contribution. Uh, we thank uh, the AMC, I think we got CPP USA people represented here. We thank everybody for your, your presence, your contributions, because we need it. And leave here believing that we can change our country. Uh, we we have the, the know-how, we have the knowledge. Liberia has been, have, have had a lot of firsts, right? So let me remind you, the origins of the West today, the African Union, where you was in San Jose, uh, on the top one. The reason why, Liberia is a maritime nation, multiple reasons, but Liberia lawyers were involved in writing the laws of the seas. Development banks that you have around the world today, you got LBDI, no longer develop, it's more commercial bank now, but you got an African Development Bank, the European Development Bank, all these banks. African economies were involved in that concept of development banks because you didn't have any capital markets, long term finance for businesses. And the list goes on and on and on. The first female president in Africa. Is a Liberian, who was a Liberian. Um, so we have a lot of first, we have a lot of things to be proud of, to build upon. Um, and we will grow that bowl of rice. We we'll guarantee every Liberian the right to put in our hand a bowl of rice. And we can grow that rice faster than you think. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you.